Good afternoon. Before we uh, before we get started, let me just run through real quickly, uh, just for your planning purposes, uh, some events that the president will be doing in and around uh, the meeting uh, later this month at the United Nations General Assembly. We'll have more detail on this uh, for you then, but I just wanted to give you just a quick sketch. Uh, the president, of course, will deliver his first address to the UN General Assembly. Uh, secondly, he will attend and deliver remarks at Secretary General Ban Ki-moon's Climate Change Summit. Can you give us some data? Uh, that would be good if I had them. Uh, I don't uh, at the moment. Uh, third, the President will attend Secretary General's luncheon for heads of state uh, and host the traditional American reception for other heads of state. Uh, the President will also host a lunch for heads of states and governments uh, from Sub-Sahara Africa uh, to discuss uh, building a 21st century partnership to increase economic and social development. Here's one date I do have. Uh, on September 24th, the President will chair a summit-level meeting of the UN Security Council on the topic of nuclear nonproliferation and nuclear disarmament. Uh, this is only the fifth time in the history of the UN that a head of state level Security Council summit has been convened and the first time ever that a U.S. President uh, will chair a UN Security Council summit. Did he ask for it? Uh, we, uh, we did ask for it and uh, are heading it. Uh, and then lastly, the President will host a meeting with countries that contribute the largest number of troops and police to UN peacekeeping uh, operations. Uh, again, m more, uh, uh, more detail on this as we get uh, a little closer to UN, but wanted to walk. Uh, yes, host a meeting with countries that contribute the largest number of troops and police to UN peacekeeping operations. Are all heads of state invited to the uh, reception? Uh, I don't have a list of who's, uh, who's uh, RSVP. Would, would who President Ahmadinejad be invited? Uh, I doubt it. Who controls the invite? Uh, Burton does. No, but I mean, is it America? <laughs> is it the U.S. or? Yeah, yeah, this is, a, this is an American reception, so yes. Uh, all right, now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Yes, ma'am. Why would he be left out? Uh, because uh, they're failing, Iran fail is failing to live up to its international obligations. There are no other nation in the UN? Has no, I, 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 I don't, uh, I, don't I, I think there are others that uh, uh, might miss out on uh, the hors d'oeuvres. Yes, ma'am. Uh, earlier today, <laughs> Speaker Pelosi said that she sees little support in the country or in Congress for sending more troops to Afghanistan. And as the president decides what he's going to do in Afghanistan, does that do her comments kind of box him in in any way? Look, as we've discussed before, obviously the the, the assessment that uh, has been delivered to uh, Central Command, to the Pentagon, and to the White House from General McChrystal. Uh, is part of a rigorous assessment process that the President wanted instituted upon coming into office uh, and to reassess our strategy uh, in this very important region of the world. Uh, that continues to be discussed here and at the Pentagon. Um, as we've also talked about, separate resource decision uh, reports uh, will be coming uh, in the next few weeks uh, but have not been received as of yet. The President will make a decision uh, based on uh, what he thinks is in the best national security interest uh, of this country. What is the, um, what is his time frame for making a decision? And when he does make a decision, how will he? Well, it's hard to, again, w the evaluation process is ongoing on the original assessment. We've not received uh, yet uh, a resource report from uh, from commanders in Afghanistan to begin to consider. So uh, there are several different assessments that will happen uh, prior to that, and uh, this is a, a, an ongoing process. Haven't they been told not to ask for more troops? Not, at, uh, not in any way, shape, or form. Yes, ma'am. Speaking of Iran, um, yesterday you said the administration wanted to see progress from Iran in the proposals that it submitted yesterday. Now that you've had a chance to look at them, did you see what you wanted? Also, 
Iran saying that the proposals did not deal directly with its nuclear activities. Is that the case? And finally, Russia came out a little bit ago and said the UN Security Council would not support oil sanctions. Um, does this administration agree? I have not seen the Russian comments. Um, uh, let me speak more broadly about uh, Iran and uh, uh, Obviously, this week's discussion at the IAEA um, makes further clear uh, the concern that the international community has uh, and the gravity that we have uh, about Iran's uh, illicit nuclear program. Um, Iran has failed to address past violations, uh, failed to comply with UN Security Council resolutions uh, to suspend its nuclear activity. Um, the offer is still being evaluated by uh, the P5 plus one. Um, I would say um, Iran's proposals have uh, time and again failed to live up uh, to its international obligations. Um, and, and we've discussed that uh, Iran obviously has two paths that they can choose. Uh, one of those paths uh, leads to increased international isolation uh, if they don't take uh, concrete steps to end their program. Uh, as we get closer to uh, the UN and the G20, obviously there'll be a period uh, uh, of discussion and evaluation as to where we are uh, and we, as we move forward uh, together with the international community. Yes, sir. Um, the president yesterday, last night, uh, said that uh, the bills, the health care reform bills, whatever he signs, will be deficit neutral and will bend the cost curve. Mm -hmm. The Democratic bills that have been introduced uh, in the House and Senate so far, at least according to the Congressional Budget Office, will not do that. Uh, they will increase the deficit, according to Doug Elmendorf, and uh, they will not bend the cost curve. In fact, the cost curve will continue to go up. Does the White House accept what the CBO director says about these bills, and if so, what pressure is the White House conveying or, or using on Congress and Democrats to improve uh, these two elements that the president said were so important to him? Well, let's let me take these uh, separately. First and foremost, it's not up to us to judge. Uh, obviously, we take at face value whatever the CBO says. Uh, about uh, about legislation as we've discussed in here. Um, the proposal that the President outlined last night is obviously in some ways different than uh, what we discuss what has been discussed on Capitol Hill uh, thus far. I think CBO would be one of the first to tell you that one way to bend that cost curve uh, is to uh, go after and discuss, uh, how to uh, prevent uh, what the president called Cadillac health insurance plans last night uh, that uh, tend to uh, make steeper that curve going upwards. I think one of the things that uh, the CBO has said is uh, addressing that will put that downward pressure uh, on cost. And obviously the president, as part of his plan last night, outlined uh, a fee on insurance companies that offer um, uh, these Cadillac plans after uh, at a certain rate. Um, so I, I think that, first and foremost, is one of the things uh, that the President outlined. And I think, secondly, the President outlined a, a trigger, uh, a deficit trigger, that would, uh, would evaluate whether or not savings have been achieved, and if savings haven't been achieved, uh, before moving forward, how that savings can be achieved before the plan is fully implemented in 2013. Uh, I think those uh, are, are two ways that uh, the President outlined last night to address those concerns. But, uh, Jake, you heard him, I think, say pretty clearly that this was, uh, this has to change the direction uh, of our, of our, uh, of government spending on health care, and <coughs> this has to not add a dime to the deficit. The president is uh, is very serious about keeping those promises. How, how firm is he being with Democratic leaders? Because they, I mean, we've heard that from Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi that they're 90 percent there. You guys have said that there's 80 percent agreement. 
seems to be that <coughs> there, I, mean, I understand the president. I put some of the proposal the president allowed in that sort of 10 to 20 percent range. Well, is it going to be that significant? I mean, I mean, are these major steps that are actually going to change the impacts of these bills according to the CBO? Well, well absolutely. I mean, again, the, 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 I think the CBO has evaluated a number of, of, of cost-cutting mechanisms uh, that have been uh, uh, outlined, and, and the one that they think has the greatest ability is to uh, deals with these Cadillac health insurance plans, which the president talked about last night. So I, I do think uh, the president believes that will have a, uh, an, a, will have an impact on the cost curve. Yes, ma'am. Um, Congressman Wilson's apology, I don't want to dwell too much, but how was that apology conveyed to the president last uh, night? My understanding that uh, uh, Congressman Wilson called uh, the chief of staff uh, last night, I can check on the time in which we got an email on that uh, an hour or so after the conclusion of the speech uh, to express uh, his apology uh, for what he had said and that uh, the chief of staff accepted that on behalf of the president. And the apology conveyed to the president this morning? Uh, last night. Last, last night, night as well. But, you know, again, I, the president, to reiterate what the president said in the cabinet meeting, um, you know, we can disagree. He said this millions of times. We can disagree without being disagreeable. Uh, that we can have an honest debate about uh, our views on health care and what we think uh, is best for the American people, but we can do so without um, what you saw last night. And I think uh, it's obvious that uh, Congressman Wilson agrees with me. Do you have details on this meeting with the president and centrist Democrats today uh, um, in the Senate? You know, I, I think we will, uh, uh, if we haven't already put out a list of, of senators uh, that will be there, I think there's 15 to 17 uh, that will be there. Um, what time? Uh, I think it's at 4.15 this afternoon, if I'm not mistaken. And what's the president's message going to be? Well, I think, the pre to yeah, I, mean, I think the president wants to talk uh, through with uh, with moderate Democrats and centrist Democrats, some of the proposals that he outlined last night, some of which we just talked about that have and enjoy their support, uh, and figuring out how we can move this, continue to move this process forward. We'll have uh, a short readout from after the meeting as well. How long do you think about that? Uh, I think it's on the schedule for probably 30 to 45 minutes, but we'll check. Yes, ma'am. He has uh, satisfied the liberal Democrats, and also, what is he going to do now to keep the momentum? Well, uh, I think uh, most of you have seen that uh, uh, we will travel on Saturday to Minnesota uh, to uh, talk again uh, on Saturday to talk again about the importance of health care reform and to, to keep this uh, uh, keep this going. Um, you know, in terms of, I think what the president outlined last night is something that can appeal to uh, Democrats and Republicans and bring people together to solve this problem that we've been talking about for so long. Uh, I don't want to speak directly for members of, of Congress, but judging from many of the comments that I've seen in reporting today, uh, I think the president uh, uh, did a good job of, uh, uh, of appealing across the political spectrum in outlining a proposal that uh, the elements of which he thinks uh, can represent uh, an important step forward in health care reform. Yes, sir. Uh, Senator Baucus uh, today said uh, that uh, as far as he's concerned, it sound like, sounded like the president was reading his plan, or our plan as he put it. He said it sounds like we're in sync with openness to co-ops, $900 billion, deficit neutral, deficit trigger. Was the president making a conscious effort to move in the direction of the Gang of Six Baucus plan? Well, look, uh, let me, obviously the president uh, fully supports and has lauded the efforts of the Finance Com Committee to continue to work uh, on getting a plan uh, out of their committee. I mean, obviously, he talked about four or five committees of jurisdiction, something that's never happened before, has completed that work. Senator Baucus uh, announced uh, earlier yesterday that the committee would convene on the 21st to mark up uh, legislation. Uh, Again, I think it's a tremendously positive and important development on continuing uh, health care reform through the congressional process. Uh, look, I, I think there's plenty of room for agreement. Uh, 
the president has used the figure that Jake cited is about 80 percent agreement. Uh, I think a lot of which he uh, reiterated last night. And uh, we certainly hope that the Finance Committee, the gang of six, Republicans and Democrats will find um, enough to like in all these pieces of legislation and, and in this proposal to move something forward. A lot of your favorite people, the pundits, are <coughs> concluding already that what the president was basically doing by making an argument for public option, but then making it so clear that he's open to either the co-op or the trigger, he's basically saying, I'm moving in the direction of Bacchus and company or the trigger, and you 100 or 80, whatever you are, liberal Democrats in the House, you're going to have to face reality or you're not going to get what you want. Is, was that the president's message last night? Well, I mean, I, again, I, I, uh, without uh, referring to my good friends, the pundits, um, I'd, I'd look more directly just exactly what the president said. I think there's no doubt that um, the president laid down uh, the notion that we have to have options, particularly in a private insurance or a small group insurance market, that, as the president noted, 75% uh, of uh, or, or the, the, more than half the states are dominated by uh, uh, just five companies in each state. I have used the example uh, many times of Alabama being dominated. 89% of that insurance market is dominated by exactly one company. Uh, that we have to have that choice and competition. And quite frankly, we've always thrived in this country with choice and competition in whatever it is. Um, uh, I think he reiterated that the public option is not the be-all, end-all of health care reform. Uh, that he's open to ways to achieve choice and competition and wants to work with Congress to see that happen. Uh, I think this is part of the process of bringing people together uh, and getting a solution. A lot of people say what you just said is kind of a death knell, really, for a robust public option. I, I, I think... Uh, uh, I think if you watch what the president says last night, I think he's very clear on this. Yes, sir. Robert, uh, we heard the president today again say he's open to talking to anybody mm -hmm. about any ideas. But is it fair to say that actions are speaking louder than words? Today, the president's meeting with a group of just Democrats. Saturday, he's traveling to Minneapolis, a state that has got two Democratic senators, a state that gave you the 60th U.S. Senate seat. <laughs> There's 59 he, U.S. And there's now 59. Right. I understand that, but it was gave you the 60 at, at the time. Is, I remember Minnesota there, being a swing state uh, at or around uh, this time last year. When that was, it was about people, the time the Republican convention ended in that. St. Paul, Minnesota. <laughs> my point is, <laughs> with Tim Pawlenty. My point is, the president talked at a lot, around then. The president talked a lot about <laughs> Republican ideas, bipartisanship. Should we expect to see a meeting here at the White House Look, with a group of Republicans? I, I presume we will have Republicans and Democrats down here to talk about this proposal. I don't, the president didn't go to Capitol Hill just to give lip service uh, to both sides of the aisle. Uh, and I, I don't think that uh, uh, you can judge one day's effort uh, or one afternoon's effort uh, uh, the one day after the speech. The president is focused on uh, uh, on hearing all of those ideas. Again, he, as you said, he reiterated that not once, but then a second time at the cabinet meeting today uh, when uh, when you all were in there. Uh, you know, I, I hesitate to, I mean, again, I, Minnesota was a, a, a uh, was a swing state for quite some time in the, in the general election. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't know that I would uh, throw Minnesota in one about winning column. votes and a lot of times, you know, we see, we watch presidents, you know, when they've got initiatives that they're trying to win votes, you know, all of a sudden they show up in states where they're trying to get a certain, you know, it's obvious you have both Democratic Senate's vote. I mean, so I'm just saying, should we not read into where you're going? No, I, the, the state wasn't, uh, the state wasn't picked for uh, who represents it in, uh, uh, in the Senate, no more than it was in who represents it uh, at any level of government. Uh, uh, it's a state the president, uh, hasn't been to and uh, looks forward to going to on Saturday. Who's the last Republican besides Olympia Snow that he's talked with about, uh, that he's, the president himself talked with about health care? Uh, I, I have to go back and look at my call list. I, uh, I, Is it I, recent? Uh, I, I, I don't have the call list. I'd have to go look back and look. And but he's, uh, 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 let me go look at the list. And following up on Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. 
does the president believe there should be an exit strategy at some point? Absolutely. I mean, I think the president, had, first and foremost, I think the president has always discussed, and particularly um, uh, since coming to office, that, that there, isn't a, there isn't a military solution alone for Afghanistan. Uh, we, uh, we do not have, uh, we do not have the troops or the money to be there in perpetuity. Uh, I think the Secretary of Defense has been pretty clear on this as well, that uh, we're not there to build some uh, uh, utopian democracy. Uh, we have very clear goals. Uh, we're working with Congress on those benchmarks. Um, as the speaker mentioned in, in her uh, press availability today, um, mm. to disrupt, dismantle, and destroy Al Qaeda and its extremist allies. Um, but no, we're, we're, the, the president does not in, in any way envision us uh, being there, uh, being there forever. Should the American public expect to see the president say, "Okay, look, we have an exit strategy." Here it is, or you know, I think the president will continue to talk about. Later. I think the president will continue to talk about the objectives and the goals that he has for this policy, and underscore that. Uh, again, we don't have uh, we don't have the human resources uh, uh, or the material resources to be there forever. Well, what's the strategy? What's the strategy? The, the well, the president has outlined. To leave. Uh, well, the president and Congress are working on very strict benchmarks to measure. Uh, our progress in, uh, as I just said, uh, uh, dismantling, disrupting, and destroying Al Qaeda. So how long will that take? Uh, that's part of the current assessment that uh, that is going on. Obviously, this is an effort, Helen, that started in 2001, uh, and I think it's fair to say the president was a critic of uh, the lack of attention and focus paid to this effort um, for uh, quite some time that he asked that the strategy be reassessed uh, during the transition. Uh, part of that reassessment was changing commanders on the ground. Uh, and as part of that change, we now have received General McChrystal's assessment uh, of his first two months uh, in Afghanistan. Jonathan. Um, picking up on Chuck's line of questioning, um, I mean, is, is Democrat, is, pre-Afghanistan, is, is, is democratic unity now of the, the first objective Post speech um, in in the legislative strategy, and and what is you, what are you thinking right now about avoiding reconciliation? Well, um, well we have always discussed in any, on any topic the notion that uh, we we want uh, first and foremost Democrats and Republicans to work together uh, to solve uh, the problem of the magnitude that health care is. Uh, I wouldn't put uh, one series of lawmakers above another. I think uh, uh, every vote in Congress is uh, created equal, and we'd, the president would be pleased and happy to have each and every one of them. Uh, so I, again, I think there will be uh, extensive consultation with Congress, Democrats, Republicans, and uh, independents about how we move forward best on this legislation. And can you tell us um, what other folks, like the Chief of Staff, uh, Jim Messina, uh, Phil Shalera, what, 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 what their, uh, and actually Joe Biden, um, what their roles are right now, what they might be doing today and in, in the next couple of days. Uh, uh, all four of those guys spent at least an hour and a half in a cabinet meeting today where uh, health care was ex discussed extensively. Can, Reed, can somebody go check on the, uh, uh, just have them turn it off if the static is, uh, uh, the, um, uh, but I have no doubt that they will be reaching out throughout Capitol Hill, again, to Democrats and Republicans. Uh, Nancy Ann will be meeting with groups uh, of lawmakers to discuss uh, how best we move forward. Uh, I'm gonna, on Joe Biden, uh, the Vice President was called on as a pivotal person at the, at the end of the stimulus well, process, and I wonder what role you see the Vice President taking here. Well, look, obviously the Vice President brings extensive knowledge uh, of a number of uh, a number of members of Congress, uh, knowledge that the president relied on in the buildup uh, in the days ahead of the speech and the discussions, the policy discussions that we had here, uh, and he will continue to rely on uh, his knowledge and his expertise 
uh, in moving this legislation forward. I, I think Vice President Biden uh, on this topic as well as many other topics plays uh, an incredibly important and crucial role uh, for the president and, and our team. Mark. Robert, can you elaborate beyond the one sentence in your written readout on what the president said to Prime Minister Brown about the release of the uh, Pan Am 103 bomber? Look, the, the president restated uh, to Prime Minister Brown, uh, our opposition that was conveyed uh, to the Scottish government prior to their decision. Uh, and the president relayed during this conversation the disappointment in the decision that had been made. Uh, he thought this was a mistake. He continues to think it was a mistake. Obviously, uh, nearly 200 Americans lost their lives uh, in that terrorist tragedy. Uh, the president and the administration had communicated clearly uh, to the Scottish government that we believed uh, any release would be a mistake and that this individual should serve the remainder of their term in Scotland. Is the president satisfied with what Brown responded? Uh, he, he is satisfied, he, but again underscores his uh, opposition to and disappointment uh, at the decision that was made. Did, did, did Prime Minister Brown respond differently to what he has said publicly? I would, uh, we sort of have a practice not to read out what, what other governments have said, and I would uh, ask you to speak with, uh, with the Brits on that. And one more, is there any, is there any health care event beyond Saturday coming up uh, in the early days of next week? Uh, let me, I, I have not looked that far ahead on schedule. Lynn, do you have a... This, this up on the, um, on the that release situation. Later this month in New York, the president's going to host a reception for the world leaders in connection mm -hmm. with the UN mm -hmm. opening. Will Gaddafi then be invited to that reception? Uh, let me, we, we will get a list of, uh, of who is and who won't be invited to, uh, to the party. All the world leaders are. Uh, let me, uh, having not been here for uh, uh, an administration's effort at the UN General Assembly, let me get uh, NSC to weigh in on that. Yes, of, of the $900 million cost over mm -hmm. 10 years that the president uh, said last night, could you outline and break down the specifics as to how the White House yeah, is getting I don't have some of that paper with me. I'll, I'll outline in, in, in sort of broad effect. Uh, obviously, uh, we have discussed, I think, in, in, in some detail, um, the waste, fraud, and abuse uh, that is prevalent in Medicare, that strengthening the Medicare trust fund uh, through spending uh, healthcare dollars more wisely, ending the insurance company subsidies to Medicare Advantage. Um, obviously, you have uh, some uh, amount of revenue from uh, uh, agreements with uh, the hospitals and with uh, the pharmaceutical industry, some of which will be used in the pharmaceutical industry's example to uh, close the donut hole for seniors and again strengthen the Medicare program as we know it. Uh, also some of that will be used for uh, broader health care reform. Uh, and then uh, obviously the, the fee that we talked about on insurance companies uh, is a broad part of that as well. Do you, do you have any estimate of how much that fee? Uh, I don't have that. I, I don't. I, I don't have that with me. Threshold that the president would like to see. No, I think again, I think that's one of the things that uh, that we'll work through and discuss with Congress uh, as we move forward. I, obviously, there there, you there are set a threshold. Uh, not that. that I know of yet. No. Robert, a couple on health care, then one on on trade. How would the uh, medical malpractice <laughs> aspects that the president talked about last night work, and when are we likely to see? action on that. Mm -hmm. Well, as you know, the president instructed uh, the Secretary of Health and Human Services to begin working on uh, these projects immediately. Uh, I'll give you a couple of different examples of how uh, how some of these things might work, and, and as these will get developed, obviously, we'll report on them for you. Uh, the president introduced legislation with uh, now Secretary of State Clinton in 2005 in the Senate uh, that um, it builds on very successful programs that medical systems and hospitals and areas have tried that uh, seeks uh, mediation over litigation uh, in, in ways of solving some of these disputes. Uh, I think the president and his team will look at very closely uh, what Congressman Bart Gordon 
uh, put in the energy and commerce legislation, which requires prior to a suit uh, being heard in court, uh, prior to that litigation moving forward, a certificate of merit um, that is uh, that is given by uh, a board of medical professionals that certifies the validity of any litigation moving forward to cut down on uh, unnecessary costs and uh, as the president said uh, defensive medicine that he hears about from uh, doctors and doctors groups. Does that suggest that part of this could become a part of the legislation itself or do you want to handle it entirely through the administrative process? Uh, we, I, I think uh, open both. Okay. And um, the president talked about this uh, this trigger or hinge mechanism. If you're not saving enough, we have to hold back. Correct. Is that a must-have in the legislation? That's uh, that is a uh, is one of the president's proposals, and I think one of the things that he'll insist on uh, being in reform. Again, I think it underscores the promise that he made that this must uh, that this must not add to the deficit. And I, look, I. It's probably an uncomfortable moment for Democrats and Republicans when the president reminded uh, many in that chamber that we'd, we'd watched over the past many years uh, sometimes very popular programs added to the government's tab without being paid for, right? $1.6 trillion for, uh, for tax cuts in 2001 and 2003. Uh, several hundred billion dollars, I forget the final price tag, uh, for Medicare Part D. Uh, wars in Iraq and Afghanistan that uh, never went through a budget process. Uh, we had, you know, we have troops in two countries and you are uh, going through an emergency supplemental uh, process that is not counted on the deficit. I mean, those are three uh, pretty broad examples of uh, big chunks that that we're now paying for uh, that weren't paid for when we started. I think the president is determined as we address the challenges that this country faces, that one of the challenges that we face is paying for what we want to do. And I think that's exactly what the president outlined. And that's only up until 2013, or does that continue on after? No, uh, no, the, I think the 10-year the, the, the window of this legislation. The president, uh, the president extended that. Uh, going forward. Do you have a follow-up on that? So, so just, sorry, if it is so important to keep this deficit neutral, why not outline <coughs> specific ways of getting to the nine well, billion? Well, again, I just outlined some very specific ways that the president seeks dollar, to do it. Well, again, dollar. we're, we're going to work with Congress on, uh, it'd be hard to estimate the, the total amount raised by the fee on Cadillac insurance plans, uh, the fee on insurance companies without a threshold. Obviously, that's something that we're going to discuss with Democrats and Republicans alike who have come to the table at this point in the debate, uh, understanding that this proposal can do, uh, can do several things, including bend that cost curve. But you do have some sense to be able to add up. Well, there's a broad range of different things, yes. Let me do the one trade thing, Robert. It's somewhat obscure, but it's pending, so I hope you have some general analysis you can give me on this. We'll see uh, on that. <laughs> A union representing U.S. tire makers uh, won a claim against China for the surge of tire imports in the United States. Uh, the president has until the 17th of this right. month to either follow an International Trade Commission recommendation of three years of tariffs against China or do something else or nothing at all. What is his approach? How is this being handled? Is he more in favor of sanctions, meaning tariffs, or some sort of negotiated mediation on this? I'd, uh, I am aware, but you're, you'll find the answer to be semi-unsatisfactory. Uh, it's obviously something that the administration uh, uh, was, uh, we didn't have a, an economic daily briefing with the president today uh, for some scheduling reasons, but uh, this has been touched on in a couple of those uh, and is being worked on uh, with uh, representatives from the Department of Labor, the Department of Commerce, the U.S. Trade Representative, and the NEC. Uh, and as we get closer to that deadline, we'll have more on that. Would a response involving tariffs be viewed by the president as protectionist or within the realm of something that is a natural response if you are a victim of surge or? Yeah. Let me just not get ahead of where uh, where we are in that at this point. Yes, sir. Yeah, thanks, Robert. Um, the United States Olympic Committee is meeting today in Chicago about the city's bid to host the 2016 Games. The International Olympic Committee makes its decision October 2nd in Copenhagen. Apparently, it's very important for a leader to be there. 
Spain, Tokyo, the leaders of Spain, Tokyo, and Brazil have committed to being there October 2nd in Copenhagen, I believe. Is the president going to go? Not that I'm aware of, no. Has, really? has the not? urge? Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, <laughs> the uh, yeah, going to the hometown interest. Uh, let me double check on the president's schedule. Obviously, uh, I anticipate having uh, uh, representatives uh, oh, there. Valerie uh, is, is going. Okay, and there had always been a thought. I thought. Thank you for bringing it up. Uh, <laughs> no, please. <laughs> the right. The gentleman uh, yields his time to the gentlelady from uh, uh, representing Chicago. Yes. Well, as we know now, he's probably made a few million years per go by saying that he's not coming. So if you have some, well, I should say, I say, I, I said, I, I said that as far as the schedule I had seen, uh, that was not planned. Uh, I will. Uh, uh, based on the well, you don't millions of well, being held. this is uh, uh, I will because of those uh, several million ears that have now since perked uh, check. Is the date okay. being held? Uh, let me check. I, it's hard for me to look into my invisible crystal that ball. If he's not, that would that he might not come if it was thought that the city's bid, which has a little bumpy road back home right now, was in trouble. So that would be very useful well, to get a whole picture from it. Well, I, look, I, I think uh, the, the last set of articles I read on, uh, on where the IOC was on Olympic bids uh, uh, had America's bid in Chicago uh, at the top of that list. So uh, I, I don't, uh, without getting into uh, Chicago politics on that, uh, I think our bid is, this country's bid is very well represented and uh, uh, seems to be making progress. Reclaiming your time. Okay. <laughs> so you will, could, is, now, could this be a today thing to get back and call I will, uh, I will endeavor to uh, call up the schedule when I get back to my office. Thank you. Yep. Get back to all of them. I, 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 I was going to say, I guess these yeah. million or so years uh, include uh, uh, it, uh, quite a few dozen in here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, a couple of statistics questions. I noticed last night the president said 30 million or more than 30 million American citizens mm -hmm. lack insurance, and I was struck by that figure, the commonly used figure, the one the Census Bureau used today was 46 million people without 46. insurance. 46.3, right. Right. So why did the president limit it to 36 million or 30 million citizens? Was this a way to draw a distinction between American citizens and those who are illegal immigrants and the well, subject of I mean, contention uh, or what? Obviously this has been a, a point of some contention uh, during the speech, uh, as I recall. Right. Um, so. uh, uh, the legislation, the proposal that the president outlined covers American citizens. I think he was uh, clear for almost everyone that um, the legislation does not cover, his plan would not cover illegal immigrants. If you subtract a rough estimate from that 46.3 million, uh, you get a, a, a number that's somewhat unknown, but in the 30s, that represents uh, American citizens, uh, as the president pointed out. I would go one step further to point out that th last night was not the first time that the president uh, has talked about the fact that illegal immigrants aren't covered or would not be covered as part of his plan. Uh, he said that most recently. Uh, in the interview, uh, radio interview uh, that was done here and said that uh, also in the campaign in uh, 2008. So in effect he's saying that a quarter or more of the people who currently lack insurance will still lack insurance once the plan is passed, is that correct? Well again, it, it, I, I don't know. I don't know. Many uninsured people in this country presumably driving up health care costs, is that correct? Uh, well, I, 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 I I think the president would look at uh, uh, because he's the, the would look at how many uh, American citizens are covered uh, under a proposal uh, rather than uh, uh, looking at, uh, at different numbers that uh, don't include American citizens. So I'm asking those, is it then his vision that there could still be at the end of the day as many as say 16 million people living in this country without health insurance? Who well, I, I, again, I. I, I I don't think it's uh, 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 I, the president outlined a plan that doesn't cover illegal immigrants. Uh, the the number that uh, uh, the president seeks to cover 
is to provide universal access to coverage for, um, for American citizens. I think you heard the President uh, even discuss last night that uh, uh, there are going to be some American citizens uh, who decide they don't want or, or don't need health insurance uh, that uh, are also going to be living here. Robert, what's the reasoning behind that? Obviously, there's some concerns from, uh, on, among conservative Republicans about this have to do with it that it, you're, you're not legislating the negative here. You know, you're not adding, you know, passing this amendment, I guess, that they want to, you know, triple check that there is no way illegal immigrant. I mean, why not go along with that if that assuages? Well, but, uh, but Chuck, I, I think here's what is the legal here's reason. A good, let me just give you this example. I got how many questions for how many weeks about why the president hasn't, hasn't offered his views on the legislation, right? How come he hasn't introduced his plan? We did that last night. The president said in his plan, it wouldn't cover illegal immigrants. So if it takes throwing an amendment on this, you guys are okay. The, the, the president, the, the legislation that the president will sign won't cover illegal immigrants. But in the past, he has used the larger number, so then they were including illegal immigrants. Uh, I think there was just a reference to the larger number. But, but, that's, but, that's, but you knew that included a very large number, millions of illegal immigrants. So isn't it logical for people to assume that well, for a long time you were including illegal immigrants and people you no, wanted to get I mean, health insurance? No more than I would assume the logic of them having listened to what he said in the campaign where it's not going to happen. Well, Robert, yeah. Joe Wilson this morning said, defended his outburst by saying that you, illegal immigrants could still buy money on the federal Again, exchange. Jonathan, can let me, let can me you, use the example. You, no, 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 let me, because I, I stood up here and caught a lot of spears for a lot of days about where the pres president's plan was. It was delivered last night, uh, 10 minutes after 8, uh, zip code 20015. Uh, the president outlined and reiterated his belief, as enunciated in the campaign in 2008, that his plan wouldn't cover illegal immigrants. So are you saying I'm that not going to get into, I, I'm not a member of the, uh, right, but uh, but of the his, House. In his plan, would he say that a, an illegal immigrant could not take money out of his pocket, go on the federal exchange, and buy an insurance policy the, with the, his the, money? The policy would not cover, the plan would not cover illegal immigrants. Period. I think the question is, the, the House bill, for instance, 3200, explicitly says that none of the subsidies right. can go to people who are in this country illegally. Right. right. But uh, some, well, some of the criticisms, and what the Congressional Research Service analysis sa says of it is, that people who are illegal, as John points out, are able right. to buy insurance, as they already do. I can't speak for somebody that's here illegally, but I would think it would be somewhat of a bad course of events uh, if you're here illegally to alert uh, uh, people that you are here illegally and sign up for a government program. What was, was it, it's just, a, just, a, just to put the dot on that, I mean, there are <laughs> illegal immigrants who are, who are recovered by me, emergency Medicaid all the time, millions. As a result of, uh, I think, a 1986 law that was signed by President Reagan. Yes. Right, so, but the House the, the bill... That, the last time uh, Congress uh, took up immigration reform in 1986. The House bill would expand Medicaid, uh, and that could lead to an expansion of emergency Medicaid that would cover, possibly... Uh, Again. The, the but so when I'm asking, so, right. the stuff, so when you say that illegal immigrants will not be covered, does that mean they can't be covered by any expansion in emergency Medicaid? They can't be, they can't well, buy again, into the health again, exchange. Again, I, I, let me check with the the healthcare guys on how this would affect uh, the 1986 law. But they would not be uh, covered under. Uh, the health care exchange and the proposal and in this they can't right, they can't they would pre be prohibited from buying as I understand that. through the exchange if yeah. I could just follow this sort of takes us to the another issue that the president has said he wants to address which is immigration reform and I wonder would it be his vision when he addresses immigration reform to bring those people who are illegal immigrants uh, into a path towards citizenship and ultimately into a status where they could be insured. That's, uh, I, I, I don't know what would be involved in or has been involved in the legislation in Can the past. Can I follow up that. on that to clarify what you mean by an exchange? Because you keep saying that you have a range of choices in an exchange, one of them being a public option, which, you know, means that if an illegal immigrant wants to get insurance and it isn't a public option, then how could there be any, um, documentation or any any way forbidding them to do that? I'm, I'm 
you've uh, you've taken your confusing question and uh, confused me. I, I don't have the slightest idea what you're talking about. On the piece, President. We just we skip in that one because. Uh, yeah, well. You're as befuddled as I am. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> all, right. all right, here's a simple question. Uh, 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 okay. One would presume that one was. Go ahead. Okay. Um, the president has talked about imposing a fee on insurers that offer high-end policies. Right. But he used to talk about being open to a tax, and Baucus's plan calls for a tax on high-end insurance policy. So why I think is he the, backing off of that? I think the, the proposal that the president outlined last night is very analogous to what uh, Senator Baucus uh, apparently has in his plan and what uh, Senator Kerry has offered uh, or, or uh, and what Senator Kerry devised, first devised this, this idea. It might be analogous, but it doesn't change the tax code. It's a fee. Uh, ask an insurance company whether their uh, fee or, or, or whatever you call it is, uh, the, the, it's the same thing. Robert, yeah. On the 9-11 anniversary, mm -hmm. uh, A, I'm, I know we've talked about some of this before. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in whatever preview you can give us on the President's remarks. Yeah. But also, I, I, and I, I know we've also talked about this before, has the President, since taking office, made a conscious effort to tone down some of the war on terror rhetoric that we have heard over the years from the Bush administration and specifically on 9-11 anniversaries? Um, well, look, I, I mean, remember, um, uh, I mean, well, let me just outline again what the President's going to do. Uh, the President will visit uh, with families at the memorial at the Pentagon and speak there. I think we just announced that Vice President Biden uh, and his wife uh, will visit uh, New York and take part in that official ceremony. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's the first time either a president or a vice president, uh, sitting president or vice president, has taken part in the official ceremony. Uh, uh, and uh, I would, uh, the official ceremony. Uh, I think that's the case, but I certainly uh, will ask the vice president to go back and. Uh, that's the first anniversary. Was president. Well, I think so. Anyhow, sorry. Look, this was. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you were trying to get at in your question. I think the president. I mean, I think if you look at how the president observed this last year, uh, as a candidate for the presidency with his Republican competitor. For the same office, uh, there was a conscious effort on both sides, I think, quite frankly, to remove the politics of 9-11 uh, and instead remember uh, the sacrifice that so many made, the tragedy that was involved, and um, uh, do it in a way uh, that removed political labels from such an important day. Uh, I, I don't know if that answers uh, well, that part of your well, question. Let me ask it this way. Um, President Bush used to say repeatedly, America is a nation at war. He did so on 9-11, but other occasions during the year. My impression that is that since taking office, President Obama has purposely tried to turn down the heat well, I mean, on the I, rhetoric. I, I think we've, uh, we've, we've certainly uh, cut down on the use of the phrase uh, but again, our focus is on getting the, the policy right. I, I don't, I think the president spends a, a part of each of his day um, in meetings about and thinking about the men and women that we have in Iraq and Afghanistan and that are through, uh, stationed throughout the world uh, to protect our freedom and to, uh, uh, to address in, uh, Islamic extremism um, and uh, that, that takes up part of his day and is something that uh, uh, the sacrifice which he's thankful for and I think all of us are thankful for each and every day. It, regardless of how it's phrased, he's mindful of, uh, uh, of the effort of so many uh, on our behalf. Savannah? Just to clear this up, are you saying that the president's plan, in contrast to what democratic plans are right now, would expressly prohibit illegal immigrants from buying private insurance on this exchange? Uh, let me double check. That's my impression, yes. Okay, so beyond, we all know that the House bill even says you can't subsidize, no government subsidies yeah. for illegal me, immigrants. I, I will double check. With, but on a free but market. Again, uh, you know, the pres this is not something that, uh, this, uh, I think the president is pretty clear on not covering illegal immigrants. Yes, Mark? Um, thanks. 
but illegal immigrants would still, if they were grievously injured and wa injured and wandered into a hospital, be able to receive the same emergency care that they do now. It's a basic human right, right? I mean, I, I don't know whether I don't know whether the legislation envisioned changes, as I said, the 1986 immigration law that uh, went through Congress and was signed by. Uh, then President Reagan. What I wanted to ask is when you're going back to check with your health experts, have, have, have you guys, uh, and I think this follows on Cheryl's question, been able to... She has like eight. <laughs> <laughs> they were great, right? Uh, but it's sort of a catch-22, right? Because th there's the political reality that the country probably wouldn't support including illegal immigrants in, in a comprehensive care bill. But then there's the reality of the way we treat people in this country, which is if you're injured and you go to a hospital, you'll get the care. So, right. Well, I, I think you know, I'd go back and, and point you to the president's interview. Uh, uh, the, the president's interview uh, where he last talked about this. Can you achieve uh, true cost savings, sufficient cost savings to repair the system and bend the cost curve if you still treat illegal immigrants through emergency care because you can't do it the other way? Well, I, I, the, the, certainly the president believes so. Uh, I mean, uh, if you're if you're taking uh, some untold number out of 46 and reducing it by, uh, uh, or quite frankly more than that, I don't. I think the latest. I think the, I don't not have the latest number uh, handy uh, on an estimate for illegal immigrants is what 10 to 11 minus 46.3 is. 36 to 35.3, uh, so you're reducing by, again, I'm, I'm in politics, that's why I'm not so good at math, um, three quarters or, or between two thirds and three quarters. But those 10 million hanging out there are not going to mess up the equation? Uh, I, I think the President believes that through a series of proposals that he's outlined, uh, we can achieve significant uh, cost savings and bend that cost curve. Peter. Robert, um, the President during the campaign talked about surmounting old divisions, um, following back on some of the polarization in the country. Given the, um, the outburst we saw on the floor of the House last night, and given um, some of the anger we saw at the town hall meetings over the summer, is that project still alive? Is that feasible to try to uh, ratchet down that temperature? Sure. Uh, I, quite frankly, I think that's what Congressman Wilson did uh, around 10.45 last night. Uh, I think, uh, look, the President I think said this today that we all make mistakes. Sometimes we all let uh, our emotions get uh, the better of us. Um, but uh, I think the President outlined a series of ideas last night, uh, many of which Republicans have talked about. We talked about one today, uh, medical malpractice reform. Uh, it might not be everything that everybody wants, but uh, I did notice a number of people uh, on that side of the chamber uh, stand up and applaud. Um, I have seen remarks from Republicans uh, of throughout the political spectrum uh, discuss the need to get something done this year. We, would, we always take them at their word on that. Uh, we're working with Democrats and Republicans to get something done. and. I think there's a, a, a genuine chance to uh, to see reform this year. April. Robert, a follow up somewhat to that. Um, understanding that the Republican Party and even this White House, some people in this White House, want to see this liar comment story go away. It's see still the what? The liar oh, okay. comment so story yeah. go away. Um, I don't think it, it. Well, go ahead. No, no, no. Go no. ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's like it's like I'm uh, no, I'm not going to say that. Um, the uh, I think the story largely goes away April because a congressman admitted a mistake, called the chief of staff to apologize, and the president today accepted uh, publicly that apology. That's the point. Um, the White House. I knew it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Either way, um, there's a large segment of this country that's still very upset with the fact that decorum was breached, and other issues at the very least. And they want this man to either step down, resign, uh, what have you, something to happen to him. And with this apology uh, being accepted, you know, it's still not going away. What do you say to that segment of America that still wants something, some type of punishment? Even people are asking for a public apology since he made a public declaration of the word in the well of the house. People are wanting a public Look, apology from this man. I don't think, uh, I'm not here and I don't think uh, anybody in, in this building or anybody quite frankly on Capitol Hill is, is, is here to absolve what was said. 
we we take Congressman Wilson at his word that that he apologizes uh, for an outburst that he regrets. Uh, that was the message that was communicated uh, to the chief of staff last night. The president, the president strongly believes, though, that if we are going to deal with many of the big problems in our country that for years and years and years have not been settled, partly because we get into these very convenient, often Washington games, where seeking a solution takes a backseat to political points being scored and name-calling and what have you. Uh, the president is determined to break that cycle. The president is determined to seek uh, solutions for and get solutions passed for those problems. Uh, I, think, I think millions of Americans would rather see their president and their Congress, all of their Congress, focus on providing that security and stability for those that have insurance and providing a route to accessible and affordable coverage for those who don't, uh, rather than debating uh, the back and forth of the apology. Can I, can sure. I just follow on that, please? Sure. Is there, there seems to be a bigger, I think there is a bigger issue here, which a lot of people see following on April's question, which is, one, the decorum of the House, and the other is the respect for the presidency of the United States, no matter who it is. Senator Specter and Whip James Clyburn both this morning said that if you just let him get away from making a phone call to Rahm Emanuel, you're just encouraging other people to do the same thing. So don't you need something like a public apology or a reprimand to make uh, sure that without you Without having talked to him, I, I bet if you talk to the, the press secretary of that congressman today, uh, I would not think that uh, he's gone unpunished. Uh, my sense is uh, uh, that the phone rang off the hook of, for quite some time. Encourage the same kind of behavior for other people, for, for no, other presidents, no matter who it is. No, not, I, 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 I doubt anybody wants to do that and stand up and publicly apologize. I, I don't. I don't think that's. Uh, I don't think that's what people want to do, George. Uh, Rob, two two weeks ago, you said the president was willing to go to the moon if necessary to get health care reform. I will check on that about Copenhagen okay. as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the schedule, yeah. Uh, House Republicans... Could be on the way. Okay. Uh, House Republicans have been waiting since May uh, trying to get a meeting with the president. Are they somehow in an orbit uh, beyond the moon? Or why no? Why hasn't he responded? It's that? A tempting to answer uh, that in certain different, certainly different ways. Um, uh, no, the, the, the president... Uh, uh, I, I, I mentioned that the president uh, would meet with uh, many groups and, and many different leaders, and uh, and I believe that uh, that includes uh, Senate Republicans. He's talked to them. It includes House Republicans, uh, again, many of which I think have constructive ideas and want to uh, uh, want to see this process move forward. So you don't rule out that he'll accept the meeting with House. No, Trump. not at all. I mean, you know, again, I, I, we uh, look we. <laughs> The president went to Capitol Hill four hours after the House Republican Caucus announced its opposition to the recovery plan in order to go up there to talk to House Republicans, whose leadership had just said, we oppose your plan, to try to get them to support the plan. Uh, I don't doubt that the president will have a similar effort uh, on this legislation as well. Yes, sir. Who will be the, the ultimate, ultimate arbiter of whether the health care legislation that uh, comes before the president's desk increases the budget deficit? Will it be the, the OMB? Uh, will it be the CBO and other entity? Who do you foresee well, being the arbiter on that? Uh, I, uh, I don't know that it's been designated, but obviously uh, uh, CBO is uh, by law charged with uh, letting you and America and more importantly Congress know uh, how much legislation is going to cost. Uh, so I, I certainly believe that uh, they're going to, they will enter a verdict into, uh, into what a bill costs, and uh, uh, I think that would certainly be a, uh, a large part of this. Thanks, guys. Uh, I wouldn't say binding, but I, I, I would say it's, uh, it's a, it's a uh, it goes a big, big way. Thanks, guys.